Welcome to Sand Shark Snapshot, bringing you the latest news on the USCB Sand Sharks. Hello and welcome to another edition of Sand Shark Snapshot. I'm your host, Justin Jarrett, joined this time by my right-hand man, co-host, student assistant, Bracken Lambert. And Bracken, we're starting to get into full swing. Last week when we came live with the show, only one sport underway, but we've added to that now. Cross country got started on Friday up in Columbia and uh, off to a great start. We'll have Coach Larry Kimball on in a bit to talk more about that. But uh, I know Sand Shark soccer is near and dear to your heart, so let's talk a little bit about the Sand Sharks on the pitch. A couple more games in the books this week and uh, didn't get the results we were looking for, but I think still some some promising play and uh, have to be excited about the way things are heading this season. Uh, most definitely, JJ. Um, the game against Milligan, was that was a tough, hard-fought battle the entire game. Uh, ended up losing within the last four minutes. I mean, that's uh, you know kind of impressive to show the depth of this team. And then uh, not a very good game here this afternoon that we just finished up, but um, ended up being a 5-2 loss to Hastings. But, I mean, they still played well. They never, they never gave up. They played the full 90 minutes. And, of course, the results weren't what we wanted, but, you know, it's still early on, early on the season. It doesn't matter um, how you start, how you finish. So I think the promising thing that that Hastings team was pretty good, but the promising thing was that the Sand Sharks didn't lay down in that second half. Got down uh, four nothing, came back and got a couple goals in the second half. That really helps the confidence of a young team as they go forward. And we've got a big game coming up against USC Aiken. I know that Coach Ed Heverling really wants to get that one. That's kind of our state championship, so to speak. So we definitely want to get that one against the sister school next Saturday. Uh, won't be back home for a couple of weeks now, but uh, it'll be kind of nice to get a little break on our end. And uh, so far, if you had to uh, kind of encapsulate what you've seen from these first four games of USCB soccer this year, what do you think? Uh, I'm going to have to just uh, go with impressive. Um, the reason impressive is because though we're 1-2-1, one, and one, um, it's just, they've, this team has shown the depth that they have. Um, the freshmen have been very dominant on the back line and we've had plenty of scoring opportunities a lot of them haven't just fallen our way it's going to it's going to take some time it's going to take a lot of playing together and you know this is still a very young program to see how far they've come along in the last two, couple of years after going 114 their first year and 9 and 10 this year or this past year it's it's very impressive to see how they're doing so far and i think um just we'll have to see how the rest of the season goes i know the USC Aiken game is going to be big and we just have to look forward to what um, the season has to come bring for the rest of the rest of the year. So, if you haven't seen the Sand Shark soccer team yet, be sure to check out the schedule on uscbathletics.com and get out to a game as soon as possible. Playing a great brand of soccer, it's very exciting, and we're looking forward to uh, a great season, especially as the conference season rolls around. We'll be back in just a few minutes with Coach Larry Kimball to talk a little bit about Sand Shark cross country here on Sand Shark Snapshot. At the University of South Carolina Beaufort, we offer small classes, individual attention, and an affordable education in an atmosphere that fosters diversity and achievement. We are students. We field nine Sand Shark sports teams that compete in the Sun Conference. We are athletes. We are one university with two campuses serving the coastal areas of South Carolina and Georgia. We are the low country. We are the fastest growing four-year school in the University of South Carolina system. We are USCB. Welcome back to Sand Shark Snapshot. I'm your host, Justin Jarrett, and I'm joined now by USCB cross country and track coach Larry Kimball. Larry's here to uh, give us a recap of the Sand Sharks' first race of the season last weekend at the uh, Carolina Challenge. They changed the name of that event. Of course, a lot of history with that one for the Sand Sharks, going way back to the first event in the new incarnation of USCB athletics history. So, uh, kind of conjure up some good memories there to be there, Larry. Yeah, well, we were there in 2007, August 29th, I believe, and that's when Katie Mock became the first Sand Shark ever to compete in an intercollegiate uh, event. So, uh, yeah, a lot of great memories from there. And, of course, uh, some good performances on the, on the course as well this weekend. Um, we kind of know what to expect from the top two returners, Anthony, Anthony Vecchio on the men's side and Melissa Carter on the women's side, but uh, USCB fans will – see a lot of new names and new faces on the cross country squad this year and some you're really excited about right oh we are um on the men's in the men's race uh anthony vecchio again led the way for us um <clears throat> he finished in the top 20. uh there were 10 teams there predominantly all division one with the exception of uscb and savannah college of art and design 
Uh, VEC was the second, uh, actually he was the third um, non-Division I runner to finish. And VEC returns, he was a first team all-conference and national qualifier. Um, finishing right behind uh, VEC was uh, uh, Nick O'Neill. Nick's from Lindsay, Ontario. Um, one of the top uh, steeplechasers in uh, Ontario Schoolboy uh, in 2013, so we're very excited about him. Uh, we also returned um, uh, uh, Matt Harper, who ran into a little bit of trouble uh, with the heat and uh, actually ended up dropping out after a mile and a half. Uh, Chase Rodas, who ran for us two years ago, who was our sixth man, also returns. Uh, he spent last year at the University of South Carolina up in Columbia, and he came back uh, this year, and he's right now currently running number three for us. So a lot of excitement on the men's side, but I think the ones that uh, folks are really excited about and, and perhaps some of the conference teams are really concerned about are the USCB women. Uh, we mentioned Melissa Carter up at the top, and she led the way again, but uh, so a lot of uh, depth in that roster this year, and I know you're excited to see how that pans out. Yeah, we're very, very excited about our women's uh, uh, team. Uh, obviously, with Melissa, first-team all-conference national qualifier a year ago, but running right with her is a transfer from Coastal Carolina, Joy Miller. Uh, Joy was uh, an Irish national champion. Uh, she came to us uh, from, again, from Coastal Carolina, where she ran there in 2008 to 2011, took a little hiatus uh, from competitive running and is now running for us. Um, finishing two seconds behind her uh, up in Columbia on Friday night was Jamie Thomas. Jamie's from our home, my home state of Vermont and uh, she was a two-time Vermont State High School champion uh, in cross country. And so they're going to give us a solid one, two, three punch, and I think as good as any three in the conference right now. Great to see Jamie uh, continuing the tradition of, of great Vermonters here at USCB. David O'Neill, of course, on the baseball field, John Critchlow on the cross country course. So um, we've had a great relationship with Vermont. Hopefully we can keep folks coming down here from there because uh, they've all turned out pretty well. Yep. Uh, the, the thing that uh, you know was concerning Jamie as he came down here, uh, along with with uh, Nick O'Neill from Ontario, was the humidity. Yeah. Uh, so we've given them a good week, week and a half to adapt to it, and then we've kind of set them loose, and now they're they're running very very well for us. Well, very exciting start to the season, of course, and uh, got a lot of races lined up. But I know you kind of always point toward a couple at the end of the year, the Sand Shark Invitational on October 26th. That's correct. And, yep. the, uh, and then the Sun Conference Championships on November 7th? November 9th. November 9th. So a couple of big ones on your home course. Uh, is that kind of the, the goal and, and what you have circled on your calendar as far as what you're building toward? Uh, well, we've got a couple other races that we're looking at pretty, pretty good. Uh, uh, on the 14th of September will give us a good snapshot, as you say. Uh, we're going to Furman to run the Furman Invitational predominantly, again, all Division I schools, and, and including Georgia, Georgia Tech, Clemson, uh, College of Charleston, uh, and Furman. Uh, so that's going to be really, really a good challenge for us. Uh, the next real big indicator we'll have will be uh, October 11th, uh, when we go to Charlotte for the Queens University Invitational, about 40 teams, um, a very fast course. So we'll kind of know where we're at at that point. Um, and what we're trying to do, obviously, between now and then is to bridge that gap on the women's side between uh, our third runner and our, and our fourth and fifth runner. And we've got some, some folks in there who I think are really, really going to step up. Um, Melissa LaBelle, uh, Malia Powers, uh, Lizzie Castor, just three who are running very well and running together. So we just need to bridge that gap between three and four. Well, and everybody knows in cross country, you're only as good as your fourth and fifth because... Uh, Anybody can put three out there, but the, the points really pile up if you're not good at four and five. So we look forward to seeing them progress and uh, seeing the Sand Shark scores go down and down and down until the end of the year and hopefully a national championship bid. Haven't gotten a team in there yet, just individuals, so I know that would be a very exciting milestone for you. Well, we were, we were very happy the way uh, we ran against SCAD uh, <clears throat> the other night. SCAD um, is, was ranked number 23 in the preseason poll. And, and one through three, we were right with them. So again, just like we said before, four and five are going to be the true indicators for us. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, Coach. Uh, we look forward to seeing the progression as the season goes on, and we'll keep tabs with you, uh, catch up with you after that race up at Furman. That sounds great. Thanks, JJ. We'll be right back on Sand Shark Snapshot.
there's a call to be answered. The spirit of competition is still alive inside. The desire still drives. The phrase student athlete has a great ring to it. Lasting friendships are ready to be made. You just want to keep playing. Game on. Build character for life at championsofcharacter.org. Well, that's going to do it for another edition of Sand Shark Snapshot. But one last thing. We have to hand out our kudos. And uh, Bracken wasn't here to announce his Athlete of the Week last week. But uh, we'll give you the, the first honors today. Bracken, who do you have? Who's your Sand Shark of the Week? Uh, JJ, this week I've got Stephanie Moldenhauer. Um, she scored in our... Second game, I believe, or first or second game um, goal that we don't have online for the highlight reel, unfortunately. And again, with more technical difficulties here at Finland, uh, her second goal of the year this year was not able to be caught up in the highlight reel. But I'm going to have to give it to the junior from Savannah. She has absolutely been, um, she is a original Sand Shark from the beginning, one of the original players um, to f be a force. She's a returning captain. Um, captains haven't been named yet this season, but um, the way she played today, she played hard the entire game, came off, um, Alexa Muffley sent one into the, that went off the crossbar, and right there, exactly what Coach Heberling's been saying, keep crashing, keep following the ball, and she was right there to put a good head on it um, to get the first goal of the uh, first goal of the game. So, Steph, mine goes out to you this week. It was a great goal, and uh, something about Steph, when the internet goes down and the feed goes down, Steph rises to the challenge, so we know uh, maybe we should just turn off the internet from now on and let Steph take over. Well, good thing her parents are always here to see the goals. <laughs> Absolutely. It would be a, a little bit more difficult to swallow for somebody in Michigan or Canada who uh, scored their goals when the feed was out. But, oh, yeah. Well, I'll give my kudos. I'll keep it on the cross-country course this week and go with Anthony Vecchio. Uh, as Coach Kimball mentioned, a lot of great – folks that we could consider for that award but I'm going to say Anthony picked up right where he left off last year as a national qualifier and uh, ran our best time once again it's going to help that he has freshman Nick O'Neill pushing him from behind and a, a teammate that he can run with so really excited to see how those two progress as the season goes along and building up toward those two meets at the end of the year here at home uh, hopefully the Sand Sharks can do some great things well thanks for joining us for another episode of Sand Shark Snapshot Hope you had a great Labor Day weekend and uh, enjoy your week. We'll see you next week. And until then, keep your fins up. This has been Sand Shark Snapshot, a production of the University of South Carolina Beaufort Athletics Department.